The best way to figure out how rich someone is in the world is to look at their golden diamonds. This is because those things cost a lot and not everyone can afford to buy them. When regular people want it, they can do one of two things. First, they have to work hard, and second, they can steal it from the rich. Someone named Alex and his friend Judy's Jack choose the second option. They don't steal from banks like they used to. They decide to take money from the bank's safe. The police caught them, though, because Jack sold the item without thinking. They were found and put in jail in the end. Then, while they were in prison, they were punished. Alton is a member of the Hungarian Mafia and shares a room with Alex. They get to know each other and become close, until one day. Zan called his boss and asked him to find someone who could break in. Then Alex was put in charge of this mission, which will lead to great things. After being out of jail for three years, Alex went to Zen's boss Zalando. She was a well-known leader of the Hungarian Mafia. Alex found out that Zabe wanted to break into a safe in the middle of a jewelry store in London called Hat and Garden. At first, Alex was hesitant because the place had tight security and they needed an access code to get to the safe deposit box. Alarms and CCTV cameras are also set up in different places. But it looks like Izzet had already done everything. Alex only has to figure out how to get into the safe. Alex can't do this mission all by himself, of course. Alex met Danny Jones, who is also a thief, because of this. Alex talks about the plan to break into Hat and Garden. Alex needs people who are good at different things. Danny has been stealing for a long time, so it makes sense that he knows a lot of other thieves. But he asked for time to get his things together. Later, in a stadium, there is a man. Frank Baskin was his name, and he used to be a police officer. He was able to catch Alex in the past. Now, he meets one of the most important people in town, Marcus Ford. Mark finds out if Alex broke into the hat and garden safe because the Hungarian Mafia told him to. Mark is looking for Frank's help. Just store one box. Manhattan Garden Safe. Danny and his friend Brian meet Alex the next day. Brian, who doesn't know Alex, makes sure that the mission's background is clear. Alex explains if this is a plan to break into Manhattan Garden and if this is a mission from the Hungarian Mafia. Hearing that, Brian made sure that everything was done right, because he didn't want anything bad to happen. If something goes wrong, they have to deal with the Mafia. After that, Alex finally agreed, and Brian is planning to bring his two. One of them will become a craftsman transport, and the other will be both a driver and a spy. The driver's name was Kenny, and Terry, who worked for Craftsman Transport, was caught because of a robbery in the 1990s. They are already old, but they know how to rob and have done it many times. On the other hand, Frank is asking Judy's questions to try to find out more. He used to work with Jack Alex. Jack heard that some members of the Hungarian Mafia had asked Alex if he would invite a group of old thieves to rob Hatton. Even though Jack is sure they won't be able to get into Hatton Garden because the security is so tight and the thieves are so old. Frank, on the other hand, asks Jack to let him know if he hears anything new. Also, they all got together, even Kenny and Terry. Brian told them that they will join the theft mission at the hearing for Hat and Garden. If their goal is Hat and Garden, Kenny and Terry don't think they'll make it without getting hurt. But Brian was able to convince them when he said that Alex knows everything there is to know about the security system. They finally agree. Danny also said that the high risk is worth it if their estimated profit this time is more than $100 billion. When they all got together, they all agreed on the plan, and it began. Terry writes down every day how the guards at Hat and Garden have moved. Danon duty buys one piece of equipment at a time from the market so that it can't be bought later. Kenny is on duty to stay with the car that will be used to bring the stolen treasure, and Brian is on duty to plan how to get into the building by acting like he wants to hide his diamonds there. Brian can see where the safe is and what kind of security system the building has. After looking at everything, Brian and Alex decided to make a hole in the plan so they could get in. After everything has been done, Brian decides that they will run the mission on Easter because it also falls on that day. After that, Alex told Elizabeth about the plans that had been made. The head of the Mafia gives some important information, like a security code or an alarm code. Zabe asks for a piece of a diamond worth 14 million pounds sterling, and Alex will become the stakes if the mission fails. That night, as Alex was walking home, Frank suddenly stopped him and made him go with him. Frank tells Alex that he shouldn't talk to the Hungarian. Alex figures out that Frank has known about Rob's plan all along. Alex worries that this plan won't work. Frank then explains what will happen if he doesn't change the plan, but he also asks for a cut of the money they steal the next day. Ebbett came to see Alex and told him that she doesn't like it when Frank helps her with her mission. It looks like Izette knows about what happened. She thinks that Alex and Frank are friends, but Alex defends himself by saying that Frank used to be a police officer and is now in jail. Elizabeth is still sad, though, and she wants Alex to give back the diamonds he stole on Easter. After a long time of waiting, the day of the execution is finally here. Alex started out by putting on clothes for work. Then, he goes to Hat and Garden to cover the CCTV. Then he waited for his friends to get closer to the car. At the same time, Alex got a text from Frank asking him to take box number 175. All of them enter carefully through the door side and break all the CCT. Then Alex went into the security room to turn off the alarm and enter the coat he got from Zabe. 
Terry and Denny went in with some trash bags full of equipment after they had successfully turned it off. While this was going on, Kenny was waiting outside and looking around. Danny and Alex were the first ones to use the elevator to go downstairs. After that, they cut the bars that were blocking the safe right away. There was now only one door between them and the room with all the valuable diamonds. They use a big drill that has been set up in a slow way to get into the big safe. The drill was held by each person in turn. Half of the wall was still strong after an hour, even though Terry looked tired. Terry had to go to the bathroom at that time, so he took Alex with him to the bathroom. But while Alex was waiting for Terry, he found something strange and called right away. Even though the alarm is turned off, it still sounds. Alex tells Frank to check to see if they've been caught. Frank couldn't help either, because the alarm didn't go to the police but to a private security company. About scared, Alex decides to give up on the mission, but Frank tells him to keep going because he needs the box he ordered. He said he would call his fellow police officers if Alex didn't cooperate. Terry heard what was being said. He thinks that Alex told the police about their theft. He didn't want to mess up the plan. Alex finally said that he was calling an ex-cop because a sudden alarm had gone off. Alex also said that everything was safe because he had promised his police friend a safe box. Brian finally came back and kept drilling. After nearly three hours, they finally broke through the thick wall, but they still had to move the vault that was blocking the hole. They had. The cabinet was nailed into the concrete at the top and bottom, so it had to be moved with hydraulics. Brian suddenly passed out because he was so tired while he was setting up the hydraulic equipment. It looks like the cable is broken, too. There was nothing else to do. Alex finally gave up on the mission and called Kenny right away to come pick them up at the side door. Kenny asked Alex what had happened when they got to the car, but Alex just told Kenny to drive the car and get out. Alex couldn't do much to change it. He knew that doing business with the Mafia would make things harder, especially at that time. Frank asked for the box, and he said that if it wasn't there in 24 hours, he would report all of his friends. Alex was under some pressure at the time, but he couldn't do anything about it. In the afternoon, Danny, Terry, and Kenny show up and catch Alex by surprise. They came to tell Brian that his health is bad right now and that he can't keep going on the mission. Alex was doubtful because he thought the police already knew about what they had done. But Kenny argued because he had been by Hat and Garden this afternoon and there was no one there. In other words, no one knows what they have done. Danny also bought a cable to fix a broken hydraulic that he had bought. The four of them finally went back to Hat and Garden to continue the mission. When they got there, they put in a new hydraulic cable right away, and the only vault in the way was slowly moved by the hydraulics. One at a time, they went into the safe room. Now, there were dozens of storage boxes full of diamonds and other valuables right in front of them. They do what they can. Alex has to use the tools he has to open every box. In the meantime, Danny and Terry unpacked and put all of the valuable things they got into separate piles. Alex didn't forget what Frank had asked for, which was box number 175, which he moved right away. Alex finally said goodbye after getting the box and giving Frank and Elizabeth's order. Danny and Terry didn't see Alex again after that. Alex just walked out of the room without anyone noticing. Getting to a back alley, he called Jack right away and asked to be picked up and driven away from the area with the hat and garden. When they got to a place, Alex gave a very expensive diamond to them. Frank came up and pointed a gun at him as a sign of thanks while he was at the base counting his share. He didn't just ask for his order box, he asked for more because he wanted to see what was in it. Alex was about to give Frank a bag full of them, but Zabe came along and made Frank stop. Alex is upset that Frank said he would tell on his gang if he didn't deliver the order. Frank didn't move, though, because Elizabeth was much stronger than him. After getting what she wanted, Elizabeth stood up for Alex. Zabe left, and Frank could only take her order. He also said he wouldn't tell anyone about what Alex and his friends did. The box that Frank brought was given to him right away. And up until now, there has been no information about what's in the box. Alex, meanwhile, gets out of London and is free to enjoy his loot. Terry, Danny, Brian, and Kenny also had fun with their treasures in their own ways. But it didn't last long, because six weeks later, the police found out who broke into the hat and garden safe. This was because Kenny was careless and used his own car to check on hat and garden before they stole. The people who were involved were caught one by one and each got six years in prison. Jack was also caught with his share of the stolen diamonds, so he was also arrested. Alex, on the other hand, was never caught because no one knew his real name. When people are questioned, they can't give Alex's information. Even when we do bad things, we can still have fun, but God never stops being fair. Bad karma can happen at any time, but God doesn't need to check CCTV to see what he's made. 